Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. I love to see the power of light over darkness. It never bores me to see the victorious power of the Lord Jesus Christ at work in the midst of his people. How an age-long situation can live overnight at the instance of a revealed word backed up. You see, the power is revealed through understanding. It's not the activity. Doing spiritual things does not bring power. It is understanding. Understanding is the key that connects the realm of the spirit and the problem in need of the touch of God. Understanding. Hallelujah. Knowledge is very important. I'm saying this because we must cultivate a passion. Much more than receiving miracles. Much more than wanting impartation. Much more than a healing, a deliverance. We must cultivate an appetite. Not just for Rema. No. No. The word that must be understood and the end of understanding is when you know your role in the performance of that equation if you don't know your role you do not understand it the end of understanding is when my part of partnership is revealed to me no matter what you study no matter what you claim to know about God if you have not found your place what you ought to do to make it happen brothers and sisters you will never see the outstretched arm of god i am convinced that what we lack in our generation is not illumination no more than ever before there is no time in human history when information and truth from scripture is made available to people there are electronic devices there are different kinds of Bible study works, programs, commentaries that have already been brought. What people lack is understanding. So it robs them of entering the experience of what they claim to know. And it is dangerous to know a thing and lack the power of performance. It is more frustrating. It is better to be ignorant. But that you know a truth, you know a scripture, you know that this is a possibility in God, but you lack the understanding of how to make it manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Illumination. Light. The difference between any two people in the kingdom. Yes, we say it is grace. Yes, we say it is anointing. But remember the scripture says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge there is a kind of knowledge not through any knowledge there is an exact understanding that delivers exact results you can know a dimension of God it will never mean you will see everything through the knowledge there is the knowledge that brings signs and wonders there is the knowledge that brings victory in certain areas there is the knowledge that brings prosperity and increase there is the knowledge that brings honor and influence. There is the knowledge that multiplies the anointing. So your appetites must be stretched with God. 
to access the knowledge that is responsible for the outcome you desire many of us know what we want but we do not know what it takes to deliver the result this is where the challenge is if i call everyone at random here and i say stand up what do you want very few people will be in ignorance as to what they want someone will say i want a child another person will say i want to come out of poverty another person will say i want a supernatural anointing upon my life another person will say i want god to wipe my tears another song like our awesome worship team sam beautify my life another person will say lord take away shame and reproach from my life all these are possibilities that are within the context of the might of god but the key is there is the knowledge that will deliver that result you can have the knowledge that delivers to you the results to be free from barrenness but it will never prosper you you can have the knowledge that will give you a lot of money and financial prosperity but you will never carry the anointing to release supernatural possibilities to people you may never see the gift of the spirit work in your life it is important that we realize that light or the absence of it is the reason behind the challenges of many people gathered here tonight yes demon spirits yes principalities and powers but i've taught us here again and again that a stronghold is never a stronghold until there is a faulty mindset a stronghold is when spirits come and create fortification around a pattern of thinking and understanding it is that state that is capable of making the word of God of non-effect in the life of a man. Are we together now? Demons don't just veto you and act anyhow. They thrive upon your ignorance. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. It is a possibility that Satan comes. Meaning, when Satan comes, his character is to search for what in your life reflects darkness because he is darkness. So he finds an area of ignorance and that becomes his access point in your life. No matter how much you are excelling in another area, it is possible. So this answers the question once and for all, can a believer still be under the yoke of darkness? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. On the strength of insufficient renewal in, the, in a dimension, it will authorize the gates of hell to rubbish your life until light bails you out. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. It has become a national anthem here. By the way, if you've not listened to the last two series that we've had, I think that they are very phenomenal. They are very epochal. I challenge you, especially for those of you, um, those of us online and those of us who are coming here for the first time please get it and listen are we together now spiritual intelligence and the mystery of exemption you have to listen to it hallelujah first corinthians did i do something wrong again four i think i wrote it down here let's look at it ephesians i'm sorry ephesians 4 18 it says having their understanding darkened having their understanding darkened listen then it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them so although you are a possessor remember our teaching the epistle of john this is the record it's a testimony it's a legal document that god has given us the way that divine life then it says that life is in his son so when you encounter the son you have the life but the bible says ignorance can alienate you from the experience of the possibilities that come with that life so i am a possessor of that life but it is possible i can die ss or as i am a possessor of that life but i can die barry i am a possessor of that life and i can never rise in certain superior dimensions of the anointing i am a possessor of that life but that life is released through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge never forget this there are many people who claim and boast that they are carrying the life of god 
but the experience of their lives do not show that such a possibility exists within them knowledge knowledge in fact i love the way i think it's isaiah 33 please give us isaiah 33 i hope i'm right um isaiah it should be help me holy spirit isaiah 33 uh, it should be five or six isaiah 33 five or six it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times that's right and wisdom and knowledge shall be what the stability when you find out that there is no dimension of stability in a man's life it is because there is no wisdom and there is no knowledge these two instruments in the spirit govern stability and establishment in the life of a man in the life of a people wisdom and knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet was lamenting and it's a very interesting scripture because he starts saying my people my people so we are not talking of those alienated from the commonwealth of Israel my people he says are destroyed not because of Satan for lack of knowledge that means a believer can sustain an understanding and then alongside the grace that comes with that understanding and it will literally paralyze the possibilities of Satan within your life and within your vicinity there is such a reality in the spirit that a man can live free of the dominion of Satan and everything he represents has thou considered my servant Job and Satan testified that I came around him and I could not break that hedge he said is it not because you have set a hedge God did not only do it to Job Job knew the secrets that would compel that hedge to be there he says in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle that was the secret Job knew what to do whilst his children went for party he offered sacrifices in advance wisdom understanding he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness brothers and sisters listen to me let me tell you something as powerful and mighty as God is the ultimate key to confidence the ultimate key to being mightily used by God much more than just submitting to him which is important is that you must have a passion not for careless random spiritual knowledge not everything spiritual is useful for the dimensions you seek to enter i've given us an example if i go to the market and my goal is to make fried fried rice if i see yam will i buy it is yam bad but it's not part of the ingredients required for what i desire if i'm passing around and i see very red palm oil very good one should i buy it well i don't know whether they make fried rice with palm oil but i don't think so so i pass it is that true now when your journey in the spirit becomes such that you are attracted by everything spiritual two things will happen to you number one you will be puffed up with knowledge that is random and cannot produce your result number two your pace will be slowed down you need to have a specific understanding in this season of my life i desire to rise in unction and grace and you limit yourself to the supply of understanding that is responsible for the delivery of that result there are books i've bought for up to two years i've not read them it's not spiritual carelessness the dealings of god with me does not require me to touch those materials now so they are there they are useful but not needed in my work now the times God will shift in that dimension then I will pick up those books knowledge very quickly before I pray for you I want to give you four areas that I believe every believer that wants to do mighty things through and in God in this season must be able to access write it down quickly number one in the beginning God any believer that wants to be mighty you want to walk in the anointing you must have a revelation of god you must know who god is you can know about me by reading my books but you have to meet me to know me 
and the bible tells us that jesus has come as the expression of the fullness of the image of god so as i study the life of jesus christ i have an understanding of who god is you see the bible is a compendium of god revealed in different dimensions so that as i study the bible and as i trust the presence of the holy spirit to reveal the reality of jesus to me certain things about god listen if you are coming for koinonia right now and someone stops you by the road and says apostle said koinonia will now hold in pz you're not going to listen to that person because that communication based on me that you know that communication is not consistent with how i will behave if there is a need to change venue we have a more intelligent system of communicating it is that true so because of your access to the knowledge of me you know what is not me is that true but if you are a visitor who is coming for the first time never seen me and someone stopped you and said look i think you need to reverse you will go in obedience but you are obeying a wrong information so it's not just obedience it has to be obedience to the right thing there are too many people who are obedient to wrong informations and then they say lord i'm obedient <laughs> you must understand god and understanding jesus christ together with everything that redemption brings and together with every reality that comes today in christ this is the foundation for the victory of a believer you must be able to know who god is what jesus christ represented while he walked on the earth and what he means to you now and the quality of life we have discussed it what the bible calls eternal life remember i told you it's not eternal life everybody has eternal life everybody has everlasting life that rendition is the best of the translators eternal life is a possibility once you are born the parable of the rich fool and lazarus they all left this realm to another dimension of living and they were all alive could speak so everyone has eternal life and then zoe i told us let me just do a, a quick recap that zoe is not just a life superior to the human life because there are many lives that are superior to the human life money alone can create a possibility in your life where the quality of your life becomes higher than that of an average human being you don't have to be born again just that quality are we true divination can open you up to certain possibilities in the spirit where your life becomes higher in quality than that of a human life but it's not eternal life it was john that described to us he said this life is a derivative of an encounter with a person if for any reason you find out that you are living in a higher dimension of living above the normal human life but is outside of an encounter with a person your life is higher than a human life but it is not the way and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath that life you must know this because that light that enters you is what becomes your life that's what immunes you so you are able to manifest possibilities that are not privy to the average human being then you will know that it's possible to walk in health it's not just a, a, the, an issue of i won't be sick uh -uh, it's not just jacking yourself in empty confusion confession no then you will know that you are able to rise above situations and circumstances not just by empty confession but an experience that is now your reality number two quickly the second dimension of knowledge that i think we need is the knowledge of the holy spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit very few people truly know the holy spirit many people know about him there are all kinds of theological exegesis about him you must know his person and you must know his ministry jesus took out time in john 14 15 16 to introduce us to this personality called the holy spirit and the bible makes us to understand that the success of jesus was entirely because of the spirit of god it's impossible to be mighty upon the earth 
ignoring him. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not knowing the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues is not knowing the Holy Spirit. Walking in miracles is not knowing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. You can know him. You can understand his ministry. What a joy. Your life will be a wonder when you know the Holy Spirit. Are we together? You must know the Holy Spirit. Especially if you are in ministry. Listen. I have learned by the grace of God and by experience. That the absence of certain things can never be replaced by certain others. Oratory will never replace the absence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Going to school and reading well will never replace the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit kneeling down and asking people to give you impartation will never replace a personal press for an encounter and a knowledge with the Holy Spirit miracle signs and wonders will never replace him you can fake power you can't fake his presence are we together you must press to know the Holy Spirit. I study God's generals. And every time I have an opportunity to look at materials that make reference to them. One thing was common between them. Regardless of their limitations and their temperaments. They really knew him. And their knowledge of the spirit brought accuracy in their lives. They did mighty things that we are blessed. You must know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a personality to be known by men of God and miracle workers. No. The Holy Spirit is not a personality that should be known by apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. No. The Holy Spirit is the key to living. And when he, the spirit of truth is come, the Bible says he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Can you pray one minute and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God And I will ever serve you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever follow Lord, I will seek you in the morning I will learn to walk in your ways Four step, step by five step you lead me And I will follow you all of the way That's where we are bankrupt, no direction We guess our lives and do everything And your lifetime is too small for error your lifetime is too small for repeated mistakes there must be a system in god for accuracy in ministry in family life your vocation whatever it is you cannot live your life just based on science there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but there is a personality for step by step you lead me i admit i'm ignorant but step by step you lead me and i will follow that's my part i won't be too ignorant i won't be too arrogant when he leads me i follow maybe a stupid instruction but i'm too young to question him he's the spirit of the father i trust him you trusted a lecturer who is less than 20 years older than you you trusted a man who called himself your father not more than 30 years older than you and here comes one who was in the beginning the first personality of the trinity revealed and he comes to hold your hands 
and he said look i took a very frail man called moses and i guided him brothers and sisters this thing is not just skill and talent alone is the foolishness of submission to a personality not a power not just an influence a person some of us have foolishly followed him for years with stupid instructions admitting our ignorance in the the midst of a proud world oh god you are my god just sing and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i will seek you in the morning and i will learn to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and i will follow all of my days from tonight step by step you lead you and i will follow you all of my days the Holy Spirit was with was with God when they were discussing your destiny. It's a foolish thing to not need Him in building it. No. If I was responsible for designing a curriculum and you ignore me when it comes to execution, it is called pride. I was in my mother's womb when He designed me. I called you. I ordained you. So you walk with me and say, Holy Spirit, I don't know my way I don't know my way many people claim is their power and their might many people claim I understand church planting many people claim I know how to be a man of God but can you humble yourself and press for the knowledge of him the knowledge of the Holy Spirit will require time and it will require submission one thing I know about the Holy Ghost is he hates arrogance the Holy Spirit hates arrogance when he comes to you you are not colleagues he's not in you as a tenant he's in you as the landlord what will happen tonight brothers and sisters is credited to him it is him that reveals jesus here look how many of us have wasted time listen to me i'm speaking to you there are many of us seated here you would have been working in your destiny already five years from now but this stubbornness of of not listening to him oh holy I, 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 all these church things no he told you go and serve in church by now certain things in your life would have gone ah. we wait on you lord we wait on you i wait on you lord we wait I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. That's what I've done with my life. That's what we've done with Koinonia. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. To open up my destiny. You are the only one who can open up my destiny. whatever level you are just walk with him you may have no iota of unction right now 
forget about anointing be foolish enough to hold him let him lead you let others go just walk with him you may be behind but brothers and sisters there is an unction he will put something upon your life that will shake the nations and take away the boastings of men God is never too slow with men never too slow if he's the one that kept you know you are faster faster than anything you can imagine faster there are many arrogant pastors claiming that they want to do ministry but they ignore him they like human connection but they leave him alone I will never forget years ago the spirit of God will keep me and said son never try to rush anything just walk with me just walk with me like he's telling someone now don't rush your life I know you think everybody has gone ahead of you don't rush that marriage don't rush that thing walk with him one day with him will cover 10 years of mistakes walk with him apostle I have no job just walk with him just walk with him if you were working five years ago all your salary put together would not be more than six million walk with him Gosh. the Holy Spirit fortunately from next week I'm starting a series the Lord has allowed me to take a series we're taking a series on the Holy Spirit a complete I will share with you very deep things that I've not shared with many people the Holy Spirit you ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent I went to Harvard you ignore him as a father because you think I'm not a small child Hi. will I ever be able to leave him I know you are looking at me is because I'm the I'm the part of the deal that is visible but behind me I'm not too smart to produce the results that you see I'm not ashamed of it all. there is one who is mighty mighty there is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see if it is the Lord's doing remember then it must be marvelous if it's a man's doing then it is natural scientific but the moment it becomes marvelous it is the lord's doing you are marvelous yeah. you are marvelous yeah. hey. you are marvelous yeah. value is defined by scarcity when you study developmental economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for walking with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to walk with me then I give you an unction they may criticize you but you don't deny proofs brothers and sisters no sir I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen, the key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. When we talk about intimacy with God, many busy people think it's a waste of time. 
no 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 look i teach us some no no if i follow that route i would have been a failure today a big failure not ashamed you are the power in me you are the fire at work in me you are my ever present helper holy spirit I... how do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that how do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life there are people here now with situations that doctors have ridden you off even a charm cannot solve it you need a commodity that is not available in the earth i told you the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference in a few minutes from now 10 years problems will just leave just like that no 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 that's what happens when you value him that's what happens that's what happens listen when you honor a man of god you don't just honor a body you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace are separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the holy spirit we are going to begin to pray but i i i just four things the holy spirit you don't know him you are in trouble you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah holy spirit it's grace and glory i trust that god will initiate people into that dimension of grace of intimacy with the holy spirit hallelujah yes the holy spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people seven people seven people call your people oh god it's an initiation into a dimension of intimacy the sister outside for he will be real to you real to you by his spirit this is not an issue of jamboree it's not an issue of feeling anointed it's working with a person it will make your life a wonder a wonder a wonder he will make your life a wonder he will not just give you anointing he will walk with you walk with you so you become an effulgence of that grace then you can say that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have had Thank you, oh my Father, for giving me 
gloriosa el living your spirit your work in my life is done I thank you oh my father for giving be your son and leave your spirit your word on earth please sit down if you can the third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lady. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful towards me. You'll always provide for me. Praise the allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit Southern Kaduna, let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle, it's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Lift them, oh God. I hear my spirit lifting, lifting, lifting. He's raising you. Raising you by his spirit, raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible. Raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom. That's the third thing that you must seek to know. Not just the word of God not just Rema the mysteries there is a lady in overflow three one is here two is the one by the road three is the one by the empty land there is a lady overflow three the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her please I want I want her to come overflow three I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there Please sit down. Let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk. There are so many people. You must access the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a secret code of operation. The kingdom of God operates based on systems. And you see, these mysteries contain in them 
the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power the first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles the second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship two dimensions of God's power so you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension the moment a principle is consistent with the character of God it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration you know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom but what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back but do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible are we together do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy yes you know that divine healing is a possibility but what controls it laying on of hands no no laying on of hands is just a channel the inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that are we together now you have to understand the power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need the same way if i stand with you and i have say tuberculosis you're a doctor doctor if i have tuberculosis and you stand near me must i believe in you to receive it no listen to me carefully are we together now i'm standing close to you it vetoes whether i agree with you i can even be insulting you but that's none of the business of the tuberculosis once there is proximity it will enter you you will live angry but you must receive it so if i can transfer sickness why can i not transfer health are you seeing that now that means i can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you life being the light of men you see that that's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever, whatsoever is born of God can overcome. Not by jacking yourself. And understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit. Where you can walk in it. So you can come with a challenge, you can come with a sickness. Like some of you are here now trusting God. All kinds of impossible situations. They've told you it cannot be solved. They are right. Based on their understanding. This is a doctor. They are not wrong. Based on their understanding. But God's, God's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities. You see. He says with God. With God. Watch this. I've taught you. Alone it is impossible. But with God. With God. Alone I cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with God all things all things all things are possible I want you to look at the situation we came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the Lord God of heaven it will go mm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe not the power that governs Nigeria. 
not the power that governs UN the power that created the heavens and the earth for he upholds all things by the word of his power number three that's it there mysteries so number one you must know God number two that's redemption and everything that concerns God in the person of Jesus number two you must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit the third thing you must have access to the word you must crave for accurate understanding number four this is a mystery I believe that has been known by very few and I truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that God has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body the fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ the body of Christ is not just people the body of Christ many people say the body of Christ is not just a church there are people the body of Christ is not people the body of Christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called Ecclesia the body of Christ the body of Christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said I will build it I will build it he didn't say I will make it I will build it like a formula like a plan and I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell will not prevail against it there is a formation that the body of Christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of God first Corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is here for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of God he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to listen if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down it's called the body of Christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner God wants to be known 
and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah is a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the Holy Spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that God anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the Lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now? I can't criticize Papa Ia Deboy and Bishop Oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible. Carry posters everywhere, it will not happen. There is a system. This is not publicity, it's a spiritual reality. So, in honor of what they represent, I am authorized to access that reality. That's why you are here tonight. Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. You see this thing you call koinonia? Koinonia is not a ministry. Koinonia is a system. You have to believe this. It's a system. It's not a movement. 
It's not a fellowship. It's not a group. It's a system. It's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God. I, I want you to be very hopeful. So that when you come, you don't have to be afraid. There is something about the atmosphere. So no matter how far you are, you have come to Mount Zion. Certain things happen. This is not just some human bragging, a man of God trying to shine his ministry. No. Tonight, you are standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God. Please listen to me. You are standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change. Your ministry, your business, your family is standing face to face with a challenge. And what you are about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness. The invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness. It will happen at the speed of light. Converting your prayer request to a testimony. It's not trying to believe a reality here and now. Hello, him of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be quickly right now everyone stand there are people here overflow one two three following us online in this place right now the bible says this life is in his son you don't hear about the son and receive life you meet the son there are people standing here men and women scattered around you are a pastor leader deacon gentleman lady old young rich poor regardless of your status 
Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God. And then you've been here and for some reason, you've been one leg in and one leg out. Loved God was on fire. But different things happen somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of god can i join them most welcome i want to count one to five and um now this is how we we'll do it i want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Right now, one. Quickly. Quickly run to Jesus. From the depth of your heart. You can keep standing. You don't have to lie down or kneel down. God bless you. You don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son and this life is in his son and this life is in his son man of God I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not join them quickly join them quickly I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you Three, are you coming? Apostle, I'm trying to come out, but my neighbor is stopping me. We rebuke that spirit trying to stop you. Come out, come to Jesus. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. Those coming from outside, you can wait there now. In every moment, I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way with me. Hallelujah. Madam, look at me. You, you love Jesus Christ? Come. I'm seeing you. You are not walking well. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now called me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and ulcer. My back pain here from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. That is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them. You heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. You believe that? Yes. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi! That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy, it's not just recitation. Are we together? Mama, I'll pray for you. Go back and join them. Those of you standing here, the overflow, lift your right hand and sincerely, you are not reciting a poem. From the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. No, some of you are crying, but don't worry. Jesus sees your tears. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God 
I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hand some um, of the uh, ushers there I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you. so do that very very quickly very quickly madam I will pray for you you go and write your name and come back while we are waiting for them please make sure we are going to be very fast you see that our time is gone so it's going to be a very quick walk very quick walk we are going straight to the business of the night and I want you to believe it doesn't take time it only takes God it doesn't take time it only takes God very very quickly very very quickly we're going to trust the Lord to please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please be serious in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against God's word over my life I declare that you are under judgment tonight lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and pray everyone shala bras Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one until there is total victory. Don't let the challenge, don't let the challenge limit you. Take your eyes away from it and pray. Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will.
one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. Such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Lift your hands and just be silent. Please. I'm seeing two numbers, five and one. And the Lord is saying there are 51 people here. 51 people. He's bringing massive deliverance to their families. I want you to bring them out. 51 people. Don't shout. Don't do nothing. Just keep your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God, that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows. Right now, I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve. Right now, I release the ministry of angels. Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Zapras kata prakatele kati alabash. Zopre keta li pras kabariata. Embre koto shoto pare keta. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Shala pakurata, legretos kopi shala bariata ko. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty in God. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Sekete lakata. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete prekete lakaya. Ay, 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 ay. Mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. Help that lady, please. You are mighty young. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep. Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes. That's what I'm seeing. Just flying up. Snakes. I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus. I release upon it the power to perform. Those influences. In the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence, limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep at all. You reign, you reign, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus, I'm seeing gates, gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Gates of limitations, gates of stagnation. 
unction be open by the unction of the spirit gates be open Efata be open the gate must open tonight is a miracle service I prophesied the two lift gate be open the two lift gate many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit I tell you I see gates gates of destinies gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft gates over families no progress no results I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access access into a place access out of a place the bible says to open the doors of prison there are men who are moving but they are under prison there's nothing hear me you may be here listening to me there's nothing you do that works no matter how you try seek advice it will not work no matter what you do you are not bad you are not lazy but there is a spirit but right now lift your hands in the name of jesus one more time i come against the spirit that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three open it I open it I open it online outside I command it to open I command it to open locked by ancestry locked by divination locked by necromancy and projection manipulation of the constellations I command in the name of he that holds the key of David I command that door be open that no power can shut be sensitive tonight the spirit of God is moving one of the ushers one of the ushers you are an usher but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family Visiting your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married. No children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Hello, Hima Tonga. Thy kingdom come. I will be blessed. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady, but there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Hear me? And I'm hearing in my spirit, break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means, but this is something that has to do with a covenant involving women. I arrest it right now in the name of Jesus. 
I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway, you are from Benway, you come under this influence. Please help that. Benway, Benway, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God, traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the soil of that land, release the destinies tied with you. Listen, what I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko. Black ropes tied around trees and the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift your hands. At the count of three, may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded, I command it right now upon every shrine, every activity of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural, I've taught you, operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild, this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, For the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one is light. The supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light. Number two, the air, sound. The supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound. Number three, the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every living thing makes contact with it. Number three. Are we together? Number four, water. The mystery that bears witness. Water is not an entity. Water is history. Water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit. Contained within it are more mysteries than we understand. Number five, fire. A mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is God can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing purify gold and destroy the impurities I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural because everyone is standing on the ground I want to pray for you. The Lord is asking me to break delay. Please just follow me. We are coming to the sick people. But just follow me tonight. Let's walk circumspectly. I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down. They cannot move. You are here. No matter what you do, there is no progress. This is the story of your family. Look at me. The Lord wants to visit you first, even before your family. Your two sisters, they are married, no child. Are you married? You are not married. We have to pray. I don't know if you believe what I'm telling you, but God is raising you to be a savior in your family. Believe this thing, no. You may not look like it, but it is the spirit of Deborah. But first and foremost, you must be delivered first. God is not finished with her. I command that devil, go. There is no hiding in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God whom I serve, I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now over your sisters, over your life and over your family. I command them to be broken right now. I release upon you grace for restoration in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men. I release that grace upon you. I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them. Even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh. 
the Lord comes for them with strange visitations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now all those under the anointing I command the spirits any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims therefore in the name of Jesus and at the count of three you know my voice I represent his majesty at the count of three you must let them go now and forever one two three be gone go out of their lives destinies now and forever out of their lives out of their destinies I prophesy recovery I prophesy recovery I prophesy recovery for when a thief is caught he's made to pay back tenfold I command recovery in the name of Jesus let them go there is no hiding for his light shines upon you in the name of Jesus Christ listen if there is any project you are involved in lift your hand any project business project building project please just lift your hands before I pray we pray the prayer that will release speed projects ah. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life it's not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time it's a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough I want you to stand on the ground I see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen I want us to shout the name of Jesus three times that's what the Holy Ghost is telling me I will lead you and you will shout it the third time the chains of delay and stagnation will will break open many of you physically physically you feel it happening thank you Jesus let the word of God come upon this prophecy are you ready now number one are you ready number two now I want you to get ready that grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run overtaking the chariots of Ahaz speed and advancement is coming on people right now are you ready shout Jesus receive it now receive it now let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement I command you to advance I command you to move forward I break limitations I break limitations I command advancement outside advancement the overflows advancement may that anointing hit you advancement 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 in the name of Jesus the son of the living God no power can stop you God 
is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than many. Help me. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Stretch your hands towards me. Don't lift it up. Stretch it towards me. There is, there is going to be an activation of strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Gift. The time for impartation will come. But fire is living. And it's coming upon people and the Lord said, let them stretch their hands. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands back to you. In the name of Jesus. Gifts, gifts, gifts. Don't man gifts. Don't man gifts. Where is it? I call it forth now. Don't man gifts. Don't man gifts. You may not know it's there. I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit. I'm talking of potentials. Gifts, gifts. I stir it up right now. Like a well, I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gifts that will bring you honor. Gifts. So toko toko tope reke teke te. Gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange. Like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row. Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer. And you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate me. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now inside inside it's a strange miracle coming for that person the ninth row supernatural manifestation of the power of God my sister what do you want the Lord to do in your life uh -uh. you are just generalizing huh I'm looking at you and then I'm seeing your heart and I'm seeing should I say it do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer that's that's you want the lord to honor him and what what is he doing now i'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of god has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimuna or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 
I wish we had time today, but we have to pray for the sick. I want us to leave this very fast because I'm going to counsel. Well, just leave her. I found a person, but, but you come. My dear, I want to pray. Who is this? No, 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 no. It's not just any grace. I pray for you. My dear, lift your hands. God wants to visit your family. There are four people here. A very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now. No, 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 no. Four of you right now. A strong power is hitting you right now. Just in this, this place outside. I don't know what it is about this place. Maybe the miracle services will start coming here now. There is there's real faith in this place. My dear, I end it now. I end it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands on her stomach. I end it now. I command that reproach taken from your life in the name of Jesus. Don't come out for social reasons, but I'm seeing a lady here. You have suffered a very terrible infection. This is a, a woman issue, a terrible infection. This thing, you have treated it and done everything you know to do, but it has refused to go. This is witchcraft. It's not just a normal infection. You have spent your money. But right now, the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that it comes to an end. Complete end. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Complete end. I stretch my hands. Four people. Right now here in this world. Lord, where are they? One is a lady. Three are gentlemen. Step into that dimension. That's right. Help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Okay. What is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? In Kogi State. So that you don't come and tell us lies. If, if you are not from there, just wait. There is your turn to come from lift your hands i'm seeing an attack on your life and your family and the lord is you free madam where is your child did you come with your child There's no time to waste, please. I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of witchcraft, now. And on you right now. Jesus Christ. In the name Jesus Christ. Lift your hand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it, in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai one of the things listen hold on I'm seeing now I want you to believe it I just looked up and I started hearing the cry of as if babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes and the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in I want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise God you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow three there are few people attending to them there so let's have people. You see why we need more ushers and we need more people. Say after me, Father. Father. Everyone shout it, Father. Father. We, receive we receive your visitation, your visitation. 
in the name of Jesus we receive miracles signs and wonders now please accept they ask you you don't have to tell them what is wrong don't worry the hand of God is here to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise those online I want you to connect by faith and trust the power of God to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of Jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on Friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of God is there to touch you in the name of Jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why I came here because I saw that this woman your issue is not just healing hold on I saw the, her holding pictures and a passport and then I'm looking at it and I saw a plane is it something like you were staying outside the country is that true yes sir. because I'm seeing a woman a plane bringing you is that true uh -uh. and the Lord is opening my eyes I'm seeing another vision I'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir. he drove yes sir. from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar. from where where is he this is you Ah. oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam I looked at these things and the Lord told me that this woman needs help I know I'm taking time but let's attend madam don't cry it's okay where were you before no other man we are together in our blood we are together I, were you married yes sir. you are from where benway State, sir you are from benway yes sir you see i told you what god was saying about benway you you married him and went abroad yes sir then what happened he said as you come back my paper is having issue not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community <laughs> So he married another woman. Yeah, from my same community, sir. He's staying abroad with her. Yes, sir. He drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said I should come see, back. Man, listen. This this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now I don't mean no disrespect but you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh? don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child so where are you staying now I'm staying out in Abuja so my it's sister. from Abuja you came yes sir what do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, And she knew. still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy, please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from, okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a penal state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this this brothers and sisters believe it or not is what witchcraft looks like are you seeing this whether you are in Qatar or wherever if that spirit is not destroyed this is what it will do because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman but she didn't look if you see this woman does she look like somebody who has gone abroad I'm not insulting you you can see that this woman was not even treated well suffered with the man now he went abroad and sent her back when this baby now 
if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby when this baby becomes responsible the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid you are using the baby to make to get power you see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of God you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together Holy share help me you're the God of us one he stood up your power The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even... No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible says what God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare the favor that was on Esther that made her dancer look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me? Because I'm seeing one mama coming to you in Abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody. She told you he's a man of God. He's a native doctor. Don't go anywhere. Huh? And number two, anybody that says you should bring one naira. What did I say? One naira for prayer. Just thank him and walk away. If, if this poor woman, you still collect money from her for prayer, then you must be a very wicked person, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you working? What do you want God to do in your life? Um, I'm a pastor. So when I, I mean, God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to the, I mean, the things so tough, the, the attacks and the uh, foundation, they became so strong. So I took up. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve him. I've been serving him to. Where, where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God said you they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God. It's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say i am anointed be careful as powerless as satan is is your understanding that this the powers him if you don't have that understanding you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed praise the lord my brother hold my hands i'm not just seeing you doing ministry truly you need help eh? you need help after service come and see this man pastor alpha eh? after service come and see him he will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you in the name of jesus christ a time of prophecy and activations some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction in your ministries your lives your businesses the prophetic word of God is very powerful when there is grace back in it 
because it does not only reveal it creates are we together in the next about two or three minutes i want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open be open in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman you are the first i know you are doing protocol work but you are the first to receive this grace i see a grace of two of you supernatural gift of the holy ghost taking you to a new dimension in the spirit hallelujah benga come grace for another dimension of fire lift your hands grace fresh fire fresh dimension fresh fire fresh dimension fresh fire fresh dimension you speak and there is power of performance power of performance power of performance power of performance no word will be empty you speak and there's grace and the power of performance hallelujah someone come and hold victor come come and hold them somebody grace supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension a dimension you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus supernatural grace I open up that level grace in the name of Jesus Christ 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 where shall they we're rounding up they are doing their please someone Hold her. I don't want to hold the child. These people will have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight, the grace to see, grace to see, the grace to see. Make sure you are holding her well. The grace. To Penny, you are taking back fresh fire. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fresh fire. I'm not, it's not like I'm just speaking people. This is, this is just by the Spirit. Come. The Lord is bringing glory on you. Fresh fire. Even upon your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, is it? Hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. May that fire, may that grace take a drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction. Fresh unction. Capacity. Open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a heavy spirit under that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place it on her. Just place it on her. Leave, Leave it there. In the name of Jesus judgment upon that devil foul spirit hallelujah we're out of time but i want you to receive let me start with the men of god you are in ministry here it's time to take something heavy and something genuine let me pray Jamfa, come Ejimi, come i'm seeing it a new age truly new grace and a new wine new grace and a new wine a supernatural dimension 
dimension this grace will speak in unbelievable ways lord bring him into that experience in the name of jesus truly bring him into that experience i open up i open up i open up closed fountains i open up now closed fountains i open up now fire fresh grace for influence 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 business influence new grace new dimensions of wealth influence commanding miracles strange miracles collect that child from hope collect that child from hope in the name of jesus fresh fire hope i activate that dimension fresh fire in the name of jesus god is giving you eyes that see strange dreams revealing direction for people's lives in the name of jesus where's aaron aaron where's aaron in the name of jesus christ the lord says i should tell you seasons of reward are before you seasons of great and strange reward father let it be by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit lift your hands in the name of jesus christ something is coming strong go the unction for new levels in ministry at the count of three if you are here in ministry there is a call of God upon your life one two that fire comes now take that fire now take that fire a new level of ministry a new level of power a new level of grace never to be buried never to be buried never to be buried never to be buried where's Yerima head of department media please come quickly quickly I'm praying where is he oh that's him there in the name of Jesus the Lord says he's bringing you honor untold honor untold honor by the spirit of the living God untold honor untold honor untold honor now I decree and declare Jordan where's Jordan Jordan bookstore I hear restoration where are you restoration fire that restoration fire in the name of Jesus everything the canker worm the palmer worm has stolen restoration in the name of Jesus now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God comes upon you and you begin to run like Elijah I prophesy speed receive it now receive it now speed 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 by the unction of the Spirit speed by the unction of the Spirit speed in the name of Jesus First John 5 verse 4. Let's look at two or three scriptures very quickly. What is the basis of our confidence? Why do we make all these boasts when we have not even gone into the year physically? First John 5 verse 4. Media, please help us. He said, For whatsoever is born of God whatsoever is what born of god whatsoever is born of god not whosoever whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith whatsoever so if i am born of god i qualify to make that boast that even in the midst of turmoil especially economic turmoil i can dare to say that i will thrive i will prosper and i will triumph whatsoever is born of god this is the first basis upon which we can make such an audacious claim everyone shout it say i am born of god, born of 
I know it sounds simple, but I like you to shout it. I am born of God. And so I overcome. To be born of God is a very serious thing. I know that religious people have made it look like um, I sat down here a few minutes before coming up and I watched the way Ejimi was taking care of his daughter. The daughter would want to sit on his lap. The daughter would want to run around and he would draw her. When he was coming to celebrate January, she's October, but she was part of those who caught that kick because she was born of the celebrant are you together now and so while he's going for as long as she kept identifying herself as his daughter if another baby ran and came around ushers would hold her and say no no go back but because she was his daughter she had that access the birthday has nothing to do with her but she stood in front so the bible says whosoever is born of god must join him in everything whosoever is born of God overcome the world listen this is how to defeat darkness this world is a legal realm dominion is not is not jacking yourself you must stand upon keys demons listen they are obedient nobody breaks ranks the realm of the spirit is a legal system you overcome by presenting truths you don't overcome by wishing when satan came to jesus he said it is written and satan said i can't deny it both god and demons there is a rule of engagement the same way you fight war and even among terrorists they know that they are here to kill men when they see women and children they leave them they respect the rule of engagement there is a rule of engagement in the realm of the spirit whatsoever is born of god if my body is born of god it overcomes sickness if my finances are born of god it must overcome recession are we together now if i am born of god i must be able to overcome every charm every enchantment i can't stop them from gathering i don't even know whether or not they are gathering but one thing i know is the bible already gave me expo that the whole world lies in wickedness so, so it is not unthinkable to imagine somebody is planning only god knows how many demons are planning plane crashes for me this year car accident maybe even after this service i can join them in the discussion because it makes no difference to me i am born of god believe me i'm not making a boastful statement i don't need to say avoid that talk uh -uh. I'm not, I'm not running away maybe because I don't want to hear bad news. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it, it makes no difference. It's like a child saying I will beat you. And then he's oh yeah beat me. That's what I can do with the devil. The realm of the spirit has no confusion whatsoever. It's a legal system. You don't win by mistake and you don't lose by mistake. Everything is done through laws intentionally. Is God helping us tonight? So the first basis of our confidence is that we are born of God. Everyone say, I'm born of God. What is the basis of our confidence? John chapter 1 verse 5. We still have a problem there. John chapter 1 verse 5. Sorry about the... Um, I'm sure that may also affect those outside. If so, please, we're sorry. I'm sure they will be back. Asa. John 1 verse 5. John chapter 1 verse 5 if you have it in your Bible please I'd like you to join me and read it John 1 verse 5 popular scripture ready read and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not my Bible says overcame it not and the light this is the second basis listen listen please look up the second basis, the platform upon which we can dare say it's a year of triumph is that we have been given an understanding from the word of God that darkness only remains darkness for as long as there is no light. Are we together now? When you off this light, 
this entire auditorium becomes dark but the moment the light comes on the darkness leaves so the departure of darkness is at the appearance of genuine light genuine light are we together now the second basis of our confidence is that all the works of satan are considered darkness and god and all he communicates is called light and the bible says the light shines the light shines the light shines so that god through his light is empowering us this year so that we can be able to walk through darkness so for you it does not matter whether it will light or dark because you are light yourself and you are carrying light so in case it were darkness as soon as you step in the rules change for you they have to change for you if i enter a dark room and i do not have light anything can happen i can match on a bottle i can injure myself confusion is that true but now somebody else who entered that dark room with his own light the room did not give him light but he forced the room to be illuminated through his light and he can organize himself are we together now so the bible says the light shines in darkness listen it is costly to live in today's world in ignorance costly to live in today's world in ignorance any kind of ignorance will not work well for us this year so the light shines in darkness that is the basis of our victory what should i expect this year this year of triumph what should i expect this year number one Every, I'm being careful to say it, everyone who does not trust in the name of the Lord or everyone who does not live by the principles of the kingdom, this will be a terrible year for them. This is the truth. I'm trying to be as nice as I can sound, but this is, this is the mildest way of communicating it. Anyone who is not born of God, comma, and anyone who, though born of God, is not equipped with light, will not have a very funny year. That's the truth. Brothers and sisters, I will not lie to you. If you are waiting for government, now I love the government, we are responsible people as a ministry, the government of nations and policies to change so that you will smile it means you will cry from january to december are we together now we are tapping into the realities of another system to thrive and live are you hearing what i'm saying now i like the way living faith puts it they say my case is different very powerful statement not our case my case the rules are different for me are we together we were we were coming in from Uyo yesterday we had a beautiful time by the way i'm sure there are people following us Uyo is a lovely place you want to see how heaven looks like you can go to Uyo. yeah it truly is a beautiful place hallelujah we were rushing to come and catch the flight and everything was over they were about to lift they had, i mean we were going to miss the flight but because the person who invited us had influence with the airport authorities they caused the entire plane to be grounded until we came you see that i'm just giving you an example of how a man's case can be different the rules you read the rules and regulation you read on your manual is for the general public the same way listen on saturday there is no banking on sunday there is no banking but the doors of banks open every day it depends on who is talking there are men who if they want to withdraw now they open the bank and the manager comes he said i hope i'm not inconveniencing him inconveniencing me 
Everyone shout, my case is different. Shout it again, my case is different. Listen, this is the year every time you hear them say it can't be done. Just know they are speaking to the general public. The Bible says you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You, you have to believe this. Don't just laugh. Listen, it's a mentality I have worked with for years. I never generalize my life. There is nothing general about me. It's, it's not some boastful statement. It's the truth. I expect things to be different when I come. It's my approach. So I'm very interested in what people say cannot be done. Because I like to see how that thing will treat me. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that you have a victor's mindset this year. All this generalizing ourselves. Oh, that's how it happens. No, there are always exemptions. There, there, have, there is no rule that has been applicable to everybody. There are always exemptions. Are we together? Men engage secrets from Genesis to Revelation and change keys, change rules. Kings who vowed that they could not see people saw certain women. They did things. Listen, listen, listen. Brothers and sisters, everybody's explanation is his experience. So people write books based on their experience. They teach based on their experience. They say in 40 years, it has never happened that a young man within this and that age range becomes successful based on this GDP and A and B and C. If you get a job today receiving 40,000 by our estimate in 10 years, you will now be able to build a house. When you hear those talk, honor them, but turn and say, no way. Ah, no, 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 it's not me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Believe me, I live my life as if there is no such thing as recession. I believe it by my solidarity to a nation at a corporate level. But I absolutely do not believe it. It's not, it doesn't make sense. Koinonia is rising this year as if, as if it's charm I all gave you to put in your pocket. That's how we rise. No, 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 no. That's what I saw. God has made me a pastor over the ministry. So I know what I saw. I will sympathize with any other person who has seen differently. But the Bible says Joshua and Caleb were of another spirit. Twelve spies. Twelve spies went to spy a land. Perspective. Ten of them saw the giants. Six fingers, six toes. They will shake themselves as if they are going to squeeze one another. And the, the ten were seeing themselves in, in the midst of those hands being squeezed. Whereas Joshua and Caleb said, my God, look at abundance in this land. They ran back and said, the ten said, we were like grasshoppers. Joshua and Caleb said, don't say we, say I saw them. He said, let us go up at once for we are well able. When Joshua was distributing and allocating land in the book of Joshua, Caleb came to him and said, when I was 40 years, Moses said, because of my courage, you will give me this land. Now give me this mountain. Although I am 40, about 45 years older, my strength is still there. I can take on those giants. Come on now. Everybody was looking at the end of the reign of Israel. Another man was looking at an opportunity for a tax-free life and a free wife. Are we together? David came and said, look, I can't go through all this hustle. What will be done for the person who kills Goliath? They say his family will be exempted from tax. He will marry the king's daughter. That's why when he was dancing before God and his wife turned, he said, I'm dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Causes us always to triumph. What do we expect this year? 
a year of great victory and supernatural achievement write it down a year of great victory great victory and supernatural achievement don't go around insulting people but don't listen to all this nonsense you hear around believe me when i tell you this it's a year of great victory and supernatural achievement what do we expect this year uncommon results uncommon results in every area spiritually financially career-wise uncommon results what do we expect this year total dominion and mastery over the forces of darkness and the issues of life what do we expect this year i repeat total dominion and mastery over the forces of darkness and the issues of life there are real issues in life there are real forces but that we sustain an ability to command total dominion and mastery I wrote something down here that I want to read this was even during my retreat I said our goal as a ministry don't write just listen our goal as a ministry for 2017 is to lead God's people and as many others into greater levels of intimacy with God comma revival transformation signs and wonders prosperity kingdom influence and total dominion God's people will experience the dominion power of light over darkness that's what I wrote there the dominion power you see how cheap darkness is when you hold light when you do not hold light you don't make boast when you are driving and your headlamp offs you drive like a learner or park the car but as soon as you can see a mechanic who will buy a hundred or two hundred and fifty naira bulb and just put it just because a car that you bought four million or five million now has a headlamp of less than two thousand spoiled and that entire car becomes inefficient you bought a car over five million and the head the the, the bulb right that gives light that is less than 10,000 naira because that, that headlight spoils you can't drive again you park your beautiful car and you can do nothing about it but just a young mechanic who comes buys that bulb from a shop your car can buy the shop but you carry the light and just fix it back and you can speed in the night as if it's the afternoon someone will run this year Listen, I got a powerful revelation about speed during my retreat and the Lord told me if you see somebody driving on a speed lane slow he's either a learner or the car is not working well is that true so the concept of delay or slow movement is totally a function of darkness let me tell you something every driver knows when the road is clear there is no car and there is light what do you do there's no time for moving around and nonsense are wasting time you you hurry up that's how many of us the road will be clear light will clear off every devil standing that way hallelujah some of us it's not even you will even need to change the vehicle completely because what you have been moving with you, you can't sit inside a wheelbarrow and you want to arrive Lagos that's what the economy of the world is trying to give you their theories will make you successful when you are 70 years old listen you cannot live in today's world with the suggestions men are giving and ever rise let me speak just economically speaking do you know in Nigeria every family has at least two or three people now who are jobless they have been retrenched they've been downsized and they are waiting out of eight people one person got a job of forty thousand, and everybody saying praise the lord what does that mean to that salary as soon as you tight it finishes immediately so how do you build a house 
how do you buy a car how do you get married how do you sow into the work of God you see what Satan wants to rob you so that you are 50 years and you are still staying in your parents house you are coming to koinonia but you are coming from their house at 50 and they look at you and say what is this but my case is different it truly is different hallelujah how will this be achieved we are going to pray seeing then that God has released the word his word is his bond his word is his commitment throughout this year I wrote something down you may just want to listen the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of God but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of God comma but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results so there is your desire versus the mystery that is responsible for actualizing it are we together please come help me with this bottle everyone please look at this my desire is to drink water i give one of these little ones this bottle they may be thirsty but they do not know how to open it this is the year you must match your desire with the corresponding mystery that was designed to open it up to you we have desires we know what we want but what it takes to deliver the result is where the problem is so the primary tool this year I tell you this year will be an unveiling of divine strategies the mysteries that are responsible for commanding results now I want to open this and I do not know and then somebody gives me an orientation you hold this and turn it anti-clockwise do you know I can hold this and turn it clockwise and it's not opening because that's not the law does the water hate me please answer me does the bottle know me it's a system whoever can turn it will drink the water so I use my frustration to say anytime you see this bottle run away it can be opened that's what they are preaching to you all around because people tried it and it did not work and then God tells you no take that same bottle and he tells you turn it and you turn it very easily very easily and it's open you are ready to take the water thanks be to God who through his mystery causes us always to triumph so everywhere they say it can be done God sends you there so the next time thank you the next time you see yourself standing in the midst of fire don't cry don't say it can be done ask how can it be done how 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 not it can be done how can it be done are we together God speaks to you and says by December you own your own house and you sit down and calculate and say God I'm earning 50,000 how much is is that spent you see if you think like that not even this year your lifetime you will not build are we together you have to stretch your faith and believe God the Word of God now let me tell you something what is God's part in this prophecy write it down this is the apex of this exhortation what is God's commitment Isaiah chapter 55 what is God's commitment in this prophecy if I'm doing business with you I have to know what my commitment is and what your commitment is 
right so this is what God says in Isaiah 55 verse 11 listen so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it says it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it so God is telling you his own part that as far as I am concerned my integrity over this prophetic word that is your year of triumph is guaranteed my word will not return back I will not bring you at the beginning of the year and mock you God is too big to mock you he's too big to play with you play games with your mind no so shall my word be one more scripture because from the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established are we together jeremiah 1 verse 12 jeremiah 1 verse 12 amplified says for i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it so who is the performer who is the performer write it down that's his part the part of god is the performer the one who forces that word to come to pass he said it he said it to us as a family of faith that it is our year of triumph and so we have believed him his own part is to perform it make good his bond are we together now so what is your own part because usually this is where the equation fails I want you to pay attention take what i'm about to tell you as prophetic instructions eight instructions god gave me during our retreat eight instructions and he said if you keep this and tell my people to keep this it will truly be a year of triumph so please take very seriously these eight instructions bishop oyedeko said Um, those who drive are taught by all kinds of people you call them coaches and drivers and, and all of that but those who fly planes those who train those who fly planes they call them instructors you fly a plane based on instructions there's no emotions to it it's exact you can time the landing of a plane with the fraction of a second are we together now i can't guarantee that if i ask you to drive from here to your house you may arrive in 10 minutes but when you are in the air i can time that you are landing 707 and 707 on the dot the tire is touching the ground because of instructions instructions give you accuracy 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 instructions do, doesn't leave discretion do this and this will happen don't do this and you will not suit this instruction number one what is my part what is my part in partnership with God to make this year a year of triumph second Chronicles 2020 that's instruction number one believe in the Lord and believe in his prophets write it down that's the first instruction believe in the Lord and believe in his prophets those who disregard prophetic instructions will hear it bad this year arrogant people who think when the word of god comes from a man of god it's a word they join all these these junk journalists that write nonsense about every man of god to mean when a man of god speaks he's just ranting no god has always used the instrumentality of vessels to speak his purposes to people believe in the lord your god what does it do to you establishment believe in his prophets what does it do to you prosperity so the first instruction from god if we are to experience a year of triumph is that we must believe in the lord by the way you are, if you are not born again here by the time i make the altar call please i want you to run because that's where it starts from believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established then he said believe his prophets to believe his prophets doesn't mean to agree with them 
take them as true take what they are speaking as the word from God for as long as that word bears witness with your spirit the Holy Ghost confirming it then you take it and act upon it accordingly you are going to be receiving instructions here you are going to be receiving principles here be childlike be childlike and receive it and you will be surprised the kingdom is for children he said let the little children come to me right and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven except you become like one of these little ones the bible says you cannot enter you can't experience the kingdom unnecessary big manism and pride is what will cause people to weep and languish believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe in his prophets so shall he prosper so this is not the year to come for koinonia now that does not mean you should throw your brains away please let's balance it are you getting what i'm saying believing a man of god does not mean the person says remove one shoe put it on your head and walk around uh -uh. remember the holy ghost is in you are we together now the holy ghost is in you bearing witness with everything that is being spoken so i say to believe a man of god with respect to his walking with God. Paul said, follow me as I follow after Christ. Meaning if I am not following Christ, don't follow me. Are you getting the idea now? Because many people have been indoctrinated wrongly with this issue of believing prophets. They believe what, you believe what they taught you about money and you are broke because what they said was a lie. So don't just believe nonsense and say this is what I've said. Uh, believe provided the man has a track record of working with God that's what qualifies him to be able to speak with you so that somebody does not carry I'm saying it for the sake of the thousands online so that one pastor does not carry this and go and harass his members and say even Apostle Joshua Selman said this now all of you go and bring 10 10,000 naira and give me the Bible says believe me that's not what I'm saying that's manipulation and witchcraft hallelujah you follow a man of God as he follows after Christ. So you don't just follow him blindly. You check in front of him to see who he's following. If he's following another strange spirit, you turn around. Are we together? Instruction number two. This, this, this is the, my notebook for the retreat. I, I came with it directly so that I'll read it because it came with fire from the throne. And it's good to read it as it came number two the second instruction the second key your own role is that you must cultivate a passion a passion to thoroughly understand the principles of the kingdom you must cultivate a passion for understanding an appetite for understanding fight your areas of ignorance like a cancer this year no assumptions no assumptions every gray area in your life deal with it ruthlessly i'm not getting this thing for five years i've been acting like i know it i sit down at the feet of the master and i learn how this thing works cultivate a passion for understanding the bible says they are life to those who find them to find them means you have to search for them and the bible tells us how proverbs 18 verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself that talks of focus 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 one leg here trying to read one book you read one page and then you come back after five months the year will end like it did last year and every other year you must give it your attention do you know the reason why many people never learn we are too distracted now please don't misunderstand me but i have to say this you have to be careful with the internet this year say amen. amen number two you have to be careful with your phone this year your phone may be the enemy that will stop you from triumphing you have to be careful some of these things that distract us be careful with unnecessary hilarious movies you are watching nigerian film you have 10 cds say i must finish it you set a goal to finish those films and then you are not doing anything with your life you must passionately pursue understanding 
it takes time it takes time you will need to study you will need to buy books you will need to listen to teachings again and again don't just say i listen to it again mm -mm. again and again there are some of my own teachings i've listened to one tape over 500 times believe me when i tell you this one just one koinonia teaching over 500 times god is my witness i'm not exaggerating there are other messages i've listened to one tape i will tell you almost more than a thousand times i'm not exaggerating you have to be passionate except you want to behave like a herbalist this year but if you want a predictable result be ready to spend time notice i didn't say in knowledge most of us are already aware you need understanding to know how to engage that principle is god helping us instruction number three let's hurry up what is your part number three you must be willing to be obedient and consistent write it down the third key god gave me for myself and for us two scriptures please deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then james 1 25 deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then james 1 25 the willingness to obey and to obey consistently you don't tithe in january and then the next time you come in october you don't get results that way you don't pray today and then sometime in may you just say let me go for prayer band meeting that's when you remember that you have not been praying you, there must be consistency deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt do what hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day listen when you observe and do them then the following will happen that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings so they are there but they will not come to you automatically shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord everybody say obedience say consistency yeah you don't do devotion today and then after two weeks you now kneel down and repent and just read two chapters and kneel down and repent again march you 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 change all these games this is the year you have to be serious please prophesy to yourself say i'll be serious even with the house of god there are people who are not serious you come for koinonia now and then you sit down later you say you are busy what are you busy doing you are busy suffering because nothing is working i must be consistent do you know no matter how little your efforts are if you are consistent you will get more results than somebody who comes up with an have you seen people who come up with elephant projects they just come out of one three-day fasting and say today i will read five books per week ten chapters per day i will pray three hours and while they are saying it someone is watching in two weeks you will say bros sorry oh i i remember you making that statement don't come up with elephant projects elephant projects is why people are not consistent like now most of you had retreat from december to now the fire is still hot so you are making statements that don't make sense god is saying calm down i said god just allow me or leave me run the way i want to run and you won't even reach february this year i must pay the school fees of 10 students god is saying be careful just start with say, god leave me it's my heart now the third person is already asking you and you are saying please don't talk to me listen i want to show you why people are not consistent they are not consistent because they are, they are not they don't set goals that are reasonable i'm going to be saving hundred hundred thousand per month mm -mm. apostle has said we should save how much is your salary 
your salary is 30,000. How are you going to save 100,000? Are you a thief? You see, it's not realistic. I'm not saying don't plan. But you, you have to take sensible steps. It's like a Jimmy's child saying, I must drive. Now, that's an ambitious goal, but it's not realistic. So, please go back and edit your plans to be reasonable. And invite the Holy Spirit to help you. This year, I must be a millionaire in dollars. Respect money and plan well. Don't be a fool and do stupid things. You know, I, I'm, I'm saying this as a warning. I'm speaking to so many people. You have to be wise. I'm showing you why, number one, we are not obedient. Because you'll be frustrated. You will even tight again. Take your growth in sensible, logical steps. Lord, I will be you. I can dedicate one hour praying and I'll give my heart to it. The day God grants me grace, I will use that whole day to stretch. Don't say me and eight hours. Lord, if I don't pray eight hours, kill me. That's what you said during your retreat. You would have been dead from 2nd of January. Because the only time you prayed eight hours was your retreat. You have not even prayed one hour since that time. Don't make foolish statements emotionally. Are you getting my point now? Be careful. Lord, if I miss coin only on one day this year, break my leg. Dude, we, we say all kinds of things that don't make sense. Of course, God is merciful, so he just looks at us like a, a child talking to the father. But you have to be wise. That's why people cannot obey. They yoke themselves with instructions that are too hard to obey at the moment. I must give apostle a seed every, every Friday. A Jimmy a seed every Friday. My hatred a seed every Friday. Lord, that's my covenant with you. Be careful. God didn't ask you. You're, you, are, you will get there one day. But your salary is 5,000. How do you do that? Praise the Lord. Are we together? So obedience and consistency. James chapter 1 verse 25. Please quickly, James 1.25. Let's hurry up. James 1.25. Look up please while I read. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the Bible says, and continueth, continueth, not just that he looked at it once, he continueth therein. He, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, what is his reward? This man shall be blessed in his deed. Consistency will produce results. Consistency will produce results. Don't commit yourself to anything you know you cannot continue. Ask questions. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Number, instruction number four. You must maintain a robust prayer life. Write it down. A robust prayer life. A healthy, fiery prayer life. The Bible says, And the fire upon the altar, it shall burn day and night. Listen, this is a year when there are forces of darkness. The arsenals of hell are out to eat and spew out anybody it can find. There's no room for carelessness. Are we together now? Why do we need to pray? To maintain our relationship and our contact with God. Why do we need to pray? To maintain our discernment. Why do we need to pray? To command things to be. Why do we need to pray? To challenge the forces that be to give way. To give way. You must pray. There are, there are wicked spirits. You can only imagine how many devils of darkness plan to destabilize koinonia destabilize our lives to make sure that people don't come to misrepresent us you've got to pray listen let me tell you something if you're a pastor here let me teach you a very big secret i thank god for koinonia koinonia has a robust prayer department many of you are part of it and i thank god for the leaders great guys and so many people this is a ministry of prayer there are prayer giants here but nobody's prayer for me can substitute for my personal prayer life are you hearing what i'm saying there are many lazy pastors i'm challenging us 
there are many lazy church members i know they will pray for me where are you going koinonia prayer band oh please pray for us so you see that attitude this year will not go well because there are instructions you must hear by yourself nobody can hear it for you there are many lazy men of god who don't pray they say we have prayer warriors praying for me all around some of you even sow seeds to the men praying and say please this is just a small seed to buy orange juice while you pray it will not substitute your spiritual laziness history is full of men who did not pray and the fatal disaster that happened to them let me tell you anything that affects your prayer life has truly destroyed you not will destroy you if at this point you are listening to me your prayer altar is dead you don't need a word of knowledge you are under attack just know it not from God from hell you I don't care what the excuse is you don't you don't forget to eat you don't forget to bath you don't forget to dress you don't for there's nobody working for the government who says I forgot that I'm supposed to go to work today because every time you are tired you remember salary are we together now this prayerlessness and spiritual laziness and say I'm not you see, I'm not into all this I'm not the ministry type me I'm, I'm not the ministry type you must be the ministry type this year because victory is for ministry people if you are not in ministry this year forget about victory please take what I'm saying seriously say I receive grace say it inside and outside I receive grace to be on fire in the place of prayer you have to create times listen I know we are all busy don't get me wrong I'm a very busy person most there are many people here who are working some are students there are people all around if you are waiting until it's comfortable you will never be consistent you have to you understand your life come up with a program I'm a night person I'm like a dog in the night because my daytime is busy people will not even allow me to concentrate I can't tell you I'll pray effectively in the day so the night time when unbelief has reduced in the earth people are sleeping all the people who cause unbelief to fly like magnetic waves are sleeping that's when we settle things we 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 make things be that's my that's good for me there are others the nature of your job if you pray like that you will be sick so you won't say apostle is doing it and you do it like that there are others what you just need is to just make sufficient contact for the day and then one day that you have a leave maybe in a week you can use that day and just settle and catch up for the week are we together if you don't create a system you will not pray most of us here you can spare some time in the night except you are lazy you were praying in the night when you entered relationship that prayer time now became loan time be careful God is watching you have to you have to balance that thing and tell the brother and say brother I love you but you see from this to this is a time for prayer we can readjust it but you can't just say uh -uh, yeah, yeah. Well, even God knows that we're in love be careful demons don't know you are in love and that's where the issue is because these are the little things please don't just laugh listen carefully most of us our night times are for recreation which is okay those of us in relationships you are catching up time you know discussing which is wonderful i encourage it but but i encourage it only if your prayer life will not suffer if you are in love at the expense of your prayer life you are dying say amen, amen. number number five what is the third instruction from God to us totally the fifth instruction I'm sorry totally reject fear and negative reports let me dwell for a few minutes here this one came strong in my spirit the fifth instruction to see the outstretched arm of God this year you must totally reject fear slash negative reports media three scriptures please give it to us quickly Isaiah 8 verse 12 of course you know already that fear is a spirit 
don't turn there just write it second timothy 1 verse 7 says for god has not given us the spirit of fear second timothy 1 verse 7 for god has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of love power and what fear is a spirit you must challenge it do you know i'm not against watching cnn bbc and all these stations and reading the newspapers and all of that but you have to be careful are we together now any report that violates your convictions you can read it just for entertainment but do not absorb it and add it to your convictions and start acting statistics have been released already that predicts a lot of things the economic health of nations predicts that this and that is happening there's there are already predictions that there's going to be almost a 10 percent job uh what they call it downsizing thank you by the time you hear that one now you are you are afraid because they just employed you <laughs> he says say ye not a confederacy to all of them whom these people shall say a confederacy neither fear their fear that means don't say what they are saying they are saying recession don't join them to say recession don't fight them oh. let me give you a balance don't go to the office and when they say there's recession you stand up and say look in this board meeting there is no recession they will fire you that's not what i mean what i'm saying you don't accept that as a no it's not a prophetic word for you say i reject it there's no recession in my life say it again i reject it there's no recession in my life are we together the bible says neither fear their fears listen there are only about four or five fears that plague people number one the greatest is the fear of death number two is the fear of failure are we together now the fear of death the fear of failure really what else number three the fear of disappointment disappointment purposes disappointed and all kinds of things these are some of the fears that we have around our fears are finite you can look at them and know that I can conquer them the fear of death how am I sure now that you you watch on B, on BBC and, and CNN people are in a bus a luxurious bus traveling someone sits down there you hear about the foolish boy that testimony that somebody gave where someone wanted to snuff a uh, uh, gun grenade look this year you must behave well praise God the things I used to snuff you kill yourself automatically you know that brother needs deliverance I hope you know nobody will go and bust grenade and then lose your hand is that a mistake that was calculated by hell a day before they concluded tomorrow by this time this guy has lost i'm sure it's even intercession that didn't blow the guy up maybe somebody prayed for him some problems are self-inflicted you smoke snuff and you are not in your mind and they arrest you they jail you no year of trial are we together now no year of triumph is not caused by demons we have our wheels are you hearing what i'm saying oh they are snuffing and you are there you did snuff but you are still going to prison some of us are so careless you know that there are thieves around you your best friend is a thief your your other friend is a smoker the other person is is goes to a herbalist the other person is is a lazy man look at and you are the, you are serious you can't have a year of trial brothers and sisters let's not play games you have to be serious edit your association there are people you have to wave goodbye this year they say why say because it's my year of trial totally reject fear hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 verse 15 just write it these are scriptures since it's not projected hebrews 2 verse 15 
and deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage there is a correlation between fear and bondage every time you are afraid you are kept in bondage if you are afraid of death you will not travel to go and see your loved ones you are thinking what if i die have you not heard of people who were about to eat dinner in their house as they were just they just finished serving the meal a tractor a a, a trailer just entered and killed all of them your confidence is not in refusing to get on the road your confidence is in the name of the lord i shall not die but live and declare the bible says right i said before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life i've chosen life that's why i don't smoke it's not just i chose life i chose i've chosen life that's why i don't drink hello i must say it you drink you have chosen death you smoke snuff and i don't care what it is e-cigarette um, um, um real one you are dying and another angle let me come in with another dimension gluttony is also on your way to death let me balance it are we together excessive food does something to your spirit man i'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong excessive food there is no champion i know who is a master at eating go and search history no champion i know you are temperate in all things balance yourself don't eat things that 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 cause trouble in your body many people have eaten their ways to their, their, to their grave they call it prosperity you buy two uh, uh, uh what they call it two whole chickens only you add malt add viju add yogurt are cheap and you eat it and say look when i was poor i suffered now that i'm rich you are not enjoying choose life prophesy to yourself say i choose life i'm not saying no eat they serve you a chicken eat well but be temperate be temperate and do you know a jimmy the Lord shared with me a revelation during my retreat. Do you know why many people get sick from food? Because we are disobeying what the Bible says. He who does not walk is an advice. It's an advice. It's not a warning. I'm advising you. If you don't plan to walk, don't eat. Because eating without walking will do something to your health. Oh, come on it's not we just think god is warning us it's an advice believe me brothers and sisters find out from people who don't walk and eat they don't stay healthy i'm not a doctor but ask the doctors among us here you are just eating because that life works based on the principle of give and take you are not giving anything and you are receiving if you don't walk don't eat the same way they say if you drink don't drive if you don't walk don't eat try this and see how healthy you will be most people eat but don't walk mentally they are not working spiritually they are not working physically they are not working you eat by 10 you wake up by 12 you know what you are doing you are dying great leaders are healthy people very healthy people because leadership makes you very diligent great leaders are healthy people alive and agile you see someone in his 30s mid 40s or 50s and you see him breaking down he wants to call you he's raising his hand as if he's sick food brought that kind of thing you have been eating and you have not been working do you know i, I studied this thing i'm telling you i took out time to study it a professional doctor a dietitian was talking about all of these things people walk and don't eat i mean they 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 they, they walk they eat and they don't walk say i walk and that revelation came from the fact that jesus has done everything so we should not do everything that is true but you must understand in what context it doesn't mean you lazy around and move around no sir no sir no sir 
Jesus did not die to produce lazy people. Jesus himself said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. You will never become great in life being lazy. I'm talking about fear. But I'm saying these are some of the things that sabotage our lives and keep us in fear. You are now afraid of your health oh what if they say i am this do you know if you just obey the bible you don't need to fear death do you know why god created fasting even medically speaking medically speaking people who fast periodically are healthy your body needs to take a break from all these things you are just junking in there you buy a crate of minerals and finish it in three days no you fast if you have no spiritual reason to fast i tell you I don't mean fast like don't eat you can just take a day and say i'm just on food just to just to make my body feel healthy we have been trained to feel when you eat so much you are rich no 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 one will die here this year in the name of jesus christ and none of you will kill yourselves this year in the name of jesus christ Let's hurry up. We're almost there. Instruction number six. Hmm. The sixth instruction to experience a year of triumph is be patient but persistent. Write it down. The year of triumph is for those who will be patient. Impatient people will hear it this year. You must be patient. Hebrews 6 15 Galatians 6 9 please quickly be patient it says everyone read want to read and so talking of Abraham after he had patiently endured did what after he had patiently endured i know god has spoken that it's a year of triumph but you don't wait and between this week and next week you just say i don't have a testimony that's it mm -mm, be patient over your finances be patient give god time to work things out for you give favor time to come to fruition in your life impatience will destroy many people so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise Galatians 6 verse 9 he says and let us not be weary don't gas out let us not be weary in well-doing why for in due season we shall reap what's the condition if we faint not so you must be persistent ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking knock and keep knocking and the door will open up to you i pray for you for grace to continue some of these things i'm sharing may not make sense now but brothers and sisters by the time you are in march and nothing has happened in your finances and you return back home and you find out there may not be food to eat then you go back to these things and you will see that i told you patience and persistence it doesn't mean the word of god is not working are we together by the time all of a sudden you find out that uh -uh, you're beginning to have abdominal pain and they now give you a report you don't like I say, uh -uh, but I thought God said it's my year of trial patience by the time you come for January miracle service and then nothing happens right away patience most people don't give God a chance to manifest himself in their lives we give up on God too easily. The moment you say, oh God, this is what I'm trusting. Especially when you have dreams and you have experiences that show you that God is going to help you. And then physically you are not seeing it that way. God told you that you will get a job by December. That's what you saw. That's what you had. And now it's January. Okay, Lord, I give you the glory. I thought it was December. I don't know whether I got it right or whatever. That's not important. I just know you will give me a job. You have spoken. I hold on to your word. Very simple. Instead of saying, God, is it that I'm, I'm hearing voices or you are the ones? All those things are signs of unbelief. Lord, I believe you, but I know whom I have believed. 
and I am persuaded that he is able. Everybody say, I still believe God. Prophesy to yourself, I still believe God. Yeah, the circumstances around you may not look like it, but I still believe God. Two more, and then we are done. The seventh key, you must have clear goals and expectations. Write it down. The seventh key to experience a year of triumph, you must have clear goals and expectations. Psalm 37 verse 4. And then Proverbs 23, 18, Psalms 37 verse 4. You must have clear goals and expectations. I'm taking out time to be this simple tonight because I want everyone to receive it so that we can pray this word. I really desire from my heart and God knows I prayed for you during my retreat and I told God, I said, God, please let your people get strange testimonies. Let this word work in their lives. And God told me, well, the ball is in everyone's court. God is more than faithful. But if we engage with him, then you can be sure that the sky is only a starting point. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give you what? So when you do not have desires expressed as goals, God is not authorized to bless you. Set clear goals. Are we together now? Financial goals. Reasonable financial goals set clear goals career goals okay i'm trusting god to get a job this year i'm trusting god to start a business this year my laundry should start this is the budget i need 200 000. lord i lift it before you you are more than able to make this happen i set a clear goal i should have by god's grace i plan to have a cash flow of 200 000 per month this year 100 000 per month this year that will cover the school fees of my children, cover my rent for a year. I set goals. I set clear goals that by the grace of God, every day I should be able to read a particular, you know, chapters of scripture. I set clear goals. When you don't set goals, you will never achieve anything. Proverbs 23 verse 18. Proverbs 23 verse 18. It says for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off i have an expectation for the ministry i have an expectation for my life are we together you're a businessman have expectations you're a career person have expectation oh i'm due for promotion and i believe with all my heart that this year i will be promoted to become an operations manager lord i involve you in this thank you my goal is that by the end of this year i should have finished my msc i should have finished my phd my goal this year is at least i should be able to write three or four papers of international repute this year my goal this year is that i'll be a serious student i'm on three point maybe 3.35 and my goal this year is to make five points first and second semester and to rise to a two one and then see how i can take it from there sensible goals my goal maritally speaking is to get married or to be a good wife my goal is to give birth don't just give birth set it as a goal so that you can gather the resources to manage the bible says no man intending to build a house you want to marry by june and you are wasting money in january you will not marry you set it as a goal goals give us focus are you getting what i'm saying now that way you don't waste resources there are many wasters in the body of christ wasting everything that god gives them you waste your brain you waste your resources no set goals my goal this year is to access the healing anointing god has called me into the healing ministry but i have not seen that level of healing that may be your goal and my goal this year is i want to focus on the healing ministry and trust god to access that grace so that i can become a blessing my goal this year is to sharpen the prophetic dimension god gave me i'm tired of talking to people and one out of every 20 is what comes to pass i need to sharpen my accuracy goals my goal this year i'm tired of being broke at least 
even if I don't become a millionaire this year, let me understand the laws of wealth and abundance. My goal this year in preparation for marriage is to study on motherhood, study on wifehood. I want to be an award-winning woman. My goal this year is not to be a foolish man. I've been a foolish man for many years, but now I want to calm down and understand what it means to be responsible. My goal this year is to move out of my parents' house and get a house of my own. I want to start with a self-contained. I want to be responsible this year. That's a goal. Are we together? My goal this year is to stop gossiping and making trouble and design a good life for myself. I'm tired of talking about people, going to people's homes to disturb them and be a nuisance to them. I'm ready to be serious. My goal this year is to be a greater person of integrity and character. I found out that I love God, but maybe I'm not quite a person of integrity and character. I want to work on it. Do you have goals? You must set them. Are we together? I challenge you to set goals. Please set goals. They will guide you in what to do. And they will help you know the things you should not be involved in. Oh, my goal is to start ministry this year. Okay, this is what I'm seeing. This is how God is helping me. My goal is to expand this year. My goal is to write a book this year. My goal is to do this and that. My goal is to be a more effective worker in Koinonia. I'm tired of absenteeism. I'm tired of carelessness. I want to give God my best today. When you set goals, you authorize God. I have goals. My life is littered with goals. At every given point in my life, there's no carelessness. I know what to do after this night. I know what to do tomorrow. My week is already prepared. My month is already prepared. The year is already prepared. I'm not sitting down wishing. Of course, you will adjust the goals eventually. But you have, you must have a skeletal description. So nobody just comes and says, wow, I want to come and waste your time. Have goals. And finally, the last point, Psalm 23 verse 5, you must walk conscious of the anointing. Oh yes, oh yes. Triumph, you can't rule out the anointing. Psalm 23 verse 5, walk conscious of the anointing. It's projected. Thou preparest a table before me, in the presence of my enemies it says thou anointest my head with oil and my cup overflows there is a relationship between the oil on your head and the cup on your hands there is a relationship between the results you get on your life and the unction and the grace that is upon you hallelujah this is not the year to ignore the anointing i know that as a ministry we honor the place of the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit but in a greater way listen there are some of us who we think the anointing is just for falling down and coughing out things no sir the anointing is God's ability is his help in your life are we together now if you are trying to climb a staircase and then it's not working and I hold your hands I have assisted you the anointing is God's assistance in your life to multiply your results and in many cases to even produce it in the first way the anointing multiplies your result by a factor that you cannot even consider i expect the anointing to walk over my life this year i expect the anointing to walk in the ministry in every area expect the anointing to walk in your business expect the anointing to walk in your family don't sit down and expect life to be casual don't draw your graph arithmetically draw it spiritually hmm. in the realm of the spirit two plus two is not four it depends on what god adds to the equation two plus two can be one thousand god can complete the rest that's what his grace is all about so don't walk as if you are alone listen he said for with god with god with god without god many things are impossible but with god I told God during my retreat, I said, Lord, I want to walk with you like never before. I believe that if I walk with you, my life will be 
episodes of signs and wonders brothers and sisters what you see us enjoy as a ministry among many things is the lavish benefit of the anointing of the holy spirit when the anointing is upon your life is upon your life you will command on ending results on ending results the things god has done in my life already from january till now are almost enough if he never does anything throughout this year again i'm grateful expect favor to walk there is an anointing expect favor to walk brothers and sisters expect the healing anointing to walk in your life expect the mantle of honor to walk in your life are you hearing what i'm saying now believe in the anointing many people ignore the anointing because we think it's not necessary don't get into that kind of business i believe in the anointing acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how god anointed jesus even jesus had to be anointed to be effective how god anointed jesus of nazareth the crowds that come to this ministry the thousands that follow from all the nations of the world is the anointing how much publicity can you do is the anointing are we together the results and the testimonies the miracles the signs the wonders the influence the prosperity everything is the anointing you must make up your mind to embrace the anointing for every season there is a grace that goes with it you not only receive the prophetic word you receive the grace that makes it happen if i send you i have told you the message but i must give you the money you can have the message and not have the money you will still not do anything if i send you and i say go and buy me biscuit after i've told you what i want and you are ready to go but then i i know how much biscuit is cost then i'll give it to you and sometimes i will give you more in case the price has increased hallelujah i don't know about you but brothers and sisters this is my year of triumph i believe it with all my heart god is not a joker i am not too proud to accept the word of god for my life triumph in every area i'm walking in extraordinary miracles i'm walking in extraordinary dimensions of wisdom extraordinary dimensions of grace i'm already prophesying to myself you can speak your own i'm walking in supernatural dimensions of health no sickness whatsoever i have no covenant with death no covenant with sickness it's a year my graph of progress is a straight line this year in the name of jesus regardless of the challenges that come the wisdom to surmount them is already at work in my life i decree and declare that favor surrounds me like a shield extraordinary results by the spirit the wisdom of god defying the strategies of men that's what i call the year that's what i call 2017 i call it a year of extreme favor from january to december favor follows me like a shield the lord is a shield for me i'm prophesying over my year that's what i believe lord you have declared that it's my year of triumph and i receive it i take you seriously my year of extraordinary breakthrough men are rising from everywhere to bless me this ministry is growing to new dimensions flourishing men of prayer men of fire men of revelation men of influence men of character men of godliness as a ministry there's massive salvation of souls this year extraordinary miracles by the hand of god diligent workers men and women who love the purposes of the kingdom and whatsoever adam called it that was his name thereof no sorrow this year i exempt it from my life no sorrow this year i exempt it from my life no sorrow this year i exempt it the anointing goes before me the anointing goes into every month making every crooked path straight can you rise up and turn all this into a prayer name your 2017 name it come on everything that represents triumph for you i can't be falling sick this year no i reject sickness i reject living from hand to mouth 
by the wisdom and the favor of God. I'm an extraordinary man of God. Are you praying? I access deep dimensions of revelations, deep dimensions of the anointing. The miracle working power of God is lavishly at work in my life. A greater dimension of His presence upon my life. Greater signs, greater wonders, greater testimonies. I pray like never before. I fast like never before. I study the world like never before. I rise to new levels of influence. My light is shining. Gentiles go to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Favor all the way. Favor all the way. Favor all the way. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a well watered garden. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to fear their fear. Recession is far from my life. Recession is far from this ministry. In the name of Jesus, no death, no death, no death. The earth is obedient to my voice. No death. I rise above every enchantment. I rise above every witchcraft. I rise above every necromancy. The activity of the dark world. Immune to their causes. Immune to their spells. Prophesy. My year of triumph. Celebration all the way. This is a year that I serve God like never before. This is a year that I give to the kingdom like never before. I'm a kingdom financier. In the name of Jesus, the floodgates of heaven are open over me. This is a year of strange visions. Strange visions. Strange encounters with the Holy Ghost. Are you praying, Koinonia? You are declaring over your year. Every department in this ministry is functioning at optimal level. In the name of Jesus, we record groundbreaking testimonies of the hand of God. Koinonia is contributing in a major way to advance in the kingdom this year. Massive salvation of souls by equipping of the saints.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I must emerge victorious over every battle. I will not lose one battle this year. Lift your voice and pray. No, 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 no. Not a financial battle. Not a marital battle. Are you praying, Cornelia? Not an academic battle. Thanks be to God who causes me always, always to triumph. Are you praying? There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. Thanks be to God who causes me always. Who causes me financially? Who causes me spiritually? Who causes me in ministry to triumph? Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Listen, times of triumph. Listen, times of triumph are also times when war must end. Because a victor must be there. Are we together? There are many of us who have been dragging with too many things. Today is as if you are the winner. Tomorrow is as if it defeated you. You are going to prophesy. This must be my year of completion. A victor must emerge over this issue. Lift your voice and pray. Supernatural completion. Over that sickness. I can't be healthy today and sick tomorrow. My year of completion. Over that project. My year of completion. Over my family. My year of completion. The hand of Zerubbabel. The hand of Zerubbabel. That begun this work. That same hand must complete it. It's my year of completion. A year of completion by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of us, God started speaking to us, but you got part instruction, and the other part has refused to be downloaded, and so you are grounded. You are going to say, Lord, this is the year when your voice will be clear. I'm tired of confusion in my life. I must hear that voice saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Lift your voice and pray. Confusion. I'm tired of wondering whether I should take a job or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in Zaria or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in ministry or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should marry or not. Whether I should be in business or not. Lord, let me hear your voice. And with it, let me hear the instructions for my next level. End confusion in my life. End confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the spirit of boldness. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. The challenges that many of us will see, let me tell you the truth. When you see it physically, it will look like a Goliath. But David ran to him and said, you come against me with your spears. Now is the time where you need to run to some challenges. Whether they are ready for battle or not, you say, no, I'm ready now. Finances, I'm ready now. Spiritual life, I'm ready now. Lift your voice and cry for an impartation. 
of boldness, boldness, no more fear, I will face it, no more fear, I will face it, no more fear, I will face that business and try it. No more fear. I will face this issue of joblessness and conquer it. No more fear. I will face my academics and conquer it. No more fear. I face my fears. I confront them. I no longer will run away from them. I face my fears. I face my fears. I face my fears. It's my year of triumph. Hallelujah. Fire is burning in this place. Two more prayer points. You are going to say, Lord, give me speed. I ask you for it. Give me speed. I don't want to move at the pace I moved last year. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Speed in ministry. Speed in my spiritual life. Give me speed. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. Give me supernatural speed. 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 Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hasten your word over my life. Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. And then we are done this night. Hold on. Hallelujah. Listen. One last prayer point. The Bible says the light shines in darkness. The light shines in darkness. From January till December, everything you are going to be hearing on this pulpit will be an unveiling of divine strategies god instructed me this year he said let the people of god understand these mysteries my assignment to koinonia this year is to open you up to the strategies that produce giants in this kingdom i will show you mysteries that if not oh, that god showed me i will not even teach it I told you there are personalized dealings of a man with God. There are secrets that are for a man and his covenant with God alone that control great power. God said, don't hide anything from your people. Teach them. The mysteries you have kept, the mysteries that have produced results in your own life and that you have learned from people, mysteries that are not obvious, mysteries that are not taught in pastor's conference, mysteries that are not taught to the public. You don't buy them in tapes. The secrets behind the making of men you are going to pray and say father may my eyes see may my ears hear and may my spirit receive these divine strategies lift your voice and pray for every koinonia service lord i'm not ready to waste my time this year divine strategies the mystery behind the making of giants the mystery behind the making of stars the mystery behind men becoming systems of earth Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I just had something in my spirit and let me add it as a prayer point. And the Lord is saying that we should pray and ask him to roll away every shame this year. Listen. To roll away every shame. You can excel in one area, yet another area is not working. Naaman was a captain, but he was leprous. I'd like you to say, Lord, every shame, every, every, every shame, it must be rolled away this year. Take it from my life. Lift your voice and pray. I don't know what area you have seen shame, but brothers and sisters, cry to the God of heaven. Take the reproach away from my life. Take the reproach away from my life. Take the shame away from my life. That's what the Lord is saying we should ask Him. Take away the shame from our families. Take away the shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every prophetic word from God as revealed may it come to pass in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that everything that hitherto has been a hindrance to the word of God performing in your life this year it is swallowed up by the message of God I decree and declare over your life hear me every legal access Satan has had to make sure prophecy does not come to pass on legal ground the blood speaks for you this year in the name of Jesus Christ Listen, one of my assignments this year is to make sure you prosper financially. You must criticize me, say whatever. I must make sure the people of God prosper this year. I pray for you in advance. The wisdom and the favor, these twin forces that have produced wonders in the financial realm, the mystery of wisdom and the mystery of favor, May it walk in your life this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare. You will not lose any single battle this year. You will not lose any single battle this year. I borrow the prophetic words of God's servant Bishop Oyedeko and I prophesy to you that this year your case is different I say it again this year your case is different hallelujah a level of result listen I trust God with you that 10 years track record of results God will compress it and produce for you in this year in the name of Jesus Christ some of you before April your goal for the whole year would have been achieved before April believe me when I tell you before April your goal for the year would have been achieved and I pray for you the spirit that makes many of us start well but never finish well every year is like that you start you are excited by april you've cast out by december you have given up i pray for you from january i'm praying for you that every year will be a multiplication of grace and strength and vigor. the grace to follow up on your goals i release it upon you in jesus name finally i pray for you listen there is a role that the Holy Ghost plays in making men mighty. We honor him in this ministry, you know. I pray for you. The kind of alignment that must happen between you and the Holy Spirit. The kind of alignment, spiritual alignment that you must come into to be a career of divine power and divine results. 
receive grace for that alignment in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord hallelujah now everyone stand please everyone stand there are people here this is our first meeting for the year and I told you the basis of exper experiencing a triumphant year listen is that you are born of God to be born of God means you have come to a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ what he has done for you I don't want to take for granted that there are people uh, several people here and all the overflows outside and there are thousands others listening online I believe that there are people here who are saying man of God I have been waiting for an opportunity to run to Jesus and what a good way to start there are others who are saying man of God I used to love the Lord or I love the Lord but for some reason I rise today I fall tomorrow my life has gone haywire I can't even say I'm a Christian I don't want to start this year like this some of you may be visitors who came from far as I speak to you the Holy Ghost is telling you that man of God is talking about you wherever you are inside all the overflows I want you to quickly please we have just a, a minute or two for this make your way to the front right now God bless you don't wait for anyone to call you young and old Jesus is calling God bless you mommy God bless you keep clapping they are coming Lord I don't want to start this year the way I started last year I don't want to play games with my destiny if you are coming from outside please run you can open the doors just clear the way for them to come keep coming some of you are still seated and God is speaking to you you know you need to start the year well it's a year of triumph and triumph only starts with Jesus he's giving you a new beginning keep clapping koinonia it's a sacrifice you are encouraging them for those who are indicating their interest for the Lord Jesus Christ online right where you are you may not be able to walk forward but you can listen and participate in the prayer hallelujah keep coming we may start the prayer but keep coming hallelujah now thank you so much there are people here young and old listen I know that some of you are making a decision genuinely for the first time I know that others may have made a decision but you want to concretize your decision you are saying I'm tired of playing games with God it doesn't matter what category I want you to pray this prayer it's a supernatural prayer with all your heart lift your right hand and say after me Lord Jesus please don't pretend it you are not you are not reciting a poem Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I ask you to forgive my sins be my Lord and Savior I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today I'm a child of God I am born of God make my life beautiful make my life glorious make my life victorious father I pray for these ones I'm praying for you now help them please help those under the anointing I stretch my hands towards you and I pray for you right now I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin over your life is broken help them please those under the anointing I declare that you will experience a new dimension of grace with God I speak over you in the name of Jesus that the strength of darkness the strength of the flesh the strength of sickness the strength of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus from today I pronounce you victorious I declare it in the realm of the spirit you begin to walk in perpetual victory and I speak over your life that it is your year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you for making this glorious decision it's the best decision now just an instruction before you leave
it is important for you to be planted in the house of God don't just make this an emotional decision if you don't stay within this area you must find a Bible believing church and be part of the workforce that way you are established in the house of the Lord praise the Lord if you stay within this area why not you are more than welcome now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they'll have your details and um, we're going to communicate more personally to you in due course please make sure that you put all of the details that gentleman uh, on, on uh, the guy with the monkey jacket the Lord is taking away the reproach from your life and your family that's what the Lord is saying I should tell him I don't know you but in the name of Jesus the Lord says I should tell you no more it leaves your family forever you will return with outstanding testimonies in Jesus name the Lord bless you please follow the lady she's directing you God bless you let's appreciate them koinonia Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.